I'm sorry, it's very difficult to convey. You look just furious about this. I am. I am. I've had enough. I've had enough of talentless people um, putting their tick in the right box, not because it's in the national interest, but because it's in their own personal interest to achieve ministerial position. And I, and I know I speak for hundreds of backbenchers who right now um, are worrying for their constituents all the time, but now worrying about their own personal circumstances because there is nothing as X as an ex-MP. We're talking about behaviour. We will have a little bit of good behaviour for a moment on both sides of the House. You're prepared to be unpopular, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. A fighter and not a quitter. Can you just change the same drivel over and over again by blaming Ukraine <laughs> and blaming Russia and blaming Covid? You have been in power for 12 years. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. A book is being written about the Prime Minister's time in office. <laughs> Apparently, it's going to be out by Christmas. Is that the release date or the title? No, hard to identify. Maybe uh, minor royals, members of the. I can't identify them we at this point. We can't spot everyone, no. unfortunately. They look like they could well be local dignitaries. It's hard to see. We're looking at the backs of their heads mostly. But I think we are now getting to the pointy end, as they say, of the. Was I'm just told that was Liz Trust, the new prime minister, in the distance that we could see hopping Going out of that car. Well, thank Mr. Speaker, last week the Prime Minister stood there and promised absolutely no spending reductions. They all cheered. This week the Chancellor announced a new wave of cuts. What's the point of a Prime Minister whose promises don't even last a week? And all we know right now is, unless she tells us otherwise, that the Prime Minister is cowering under her desk and asking for it all to go away. Isn't it about time she did and let somebody else who can make decisions in the British national interest get in charge instead? Yeah. Well, the Prime Minister is not uh, under a desk, as the Honourable Lady. She... I can assure... I can assure the House... I can assure the House... I can assure the House... Will you lead the Conservatives into the next general election? I will lead the Conservatives into the next general election. Definitely. Well, it, yeah. Eeks. Who is to blame for this mess? Well, first of all, I do want to accept responsibility and say sorry for the mistakes that have been made. Uh, I wanted to act, but to help people with their energy bills, uh, to deal with the issue of high taxes, but we went too far and too fast. Yes is a wave of U-turns unprecedented in scale and speed. Do you feel humiliated? I feel, first of all, that I did make mistakes and I've, I've been upfront and honest about that. That must feel but humiliating what, what, so early in office. Let's be clear though and blunt, your very vision for Britain is dead, isn't it? What I'm focused on is delivering on energy supplies, on we have to make sure, though, that we have economic stability. Let me read you some of what your own MPs have told me about what's been going on. It's checkmate, we're stuffed. It's dire. They've taken no responsibility for hiking mortgage rates. We're all done for. These are your own colleagues. What do you say to them? Because they're convinced that as a result of your actions, they and your party are going to lose. What, what I say to them is that we should be focusing on the people of the United Kingdom. I recognise that we did act too fast and that's why I've adjusted what we're doing. And I do think it is the mark of an honest politician who does say, yes, I've made a mistake, I've addressed that mistake and now we need to deliver for people. Was Rishi Sunak right all along? President Macron, friend or foe? The, the jury's out. But if I... If I... If, if, I, if, I become, if I become Prime Minister, I will judge him on deeds, not words. This summer, where we debated ideas, we debated philosophy. And he suggested your ideas would be a disaster, and he's been proven right, hasn't he? Yes, Chris, I couldn't deliver everything I wanted. Well, not everything. I mean, most of it's been junked. Well, I delivered the energy price guarantee. You talk about the energy package, and that's been 
the crutch, if you like, that you've lent on in the last couple of weeks when you faced difficult questions, proudly saying that it was bigger and bolder than Labour's. And yet that's shriveled as well, hasn't it? That hasn't survived contact with a new Chancellor. Well, this winter, families will be protected. They won't be paying the up to £6,000 bill. What on earth is going on in the Conservative Party, you may well ask? On even the most generous analysis, the government looks tonight like a complete shambles. The events of this morning, or even this afternoon, already seem like a lifetime ago. The Prime Minister U-turned again at Prime Minister's questions on the issue of the pensions triple lock. An aide was suspended for allegedly leaking, and then the Home Secretary, Suella Braverman, was forced to resign for what seemed to many like a minor breach of security procedures. But as the light faded tonight, MPs were herded towards what we were all told was a confidence vote on the issue of fracking. Why was a motion on fracking suddenly a confidence vote in the government? No one seemed sure, as things descended into complete chaos. There were reports of Tory MPs being manhandled into the lobby of the Deputy Chief Whip and the Chief Whip resigning. The former reported to have been seen walking away saying he just didn't effing care anymore. As we go on air tonight, we hear they have officially unresigned. But what is certain is that none of us here have ever witnessed anything like this. Lots of people are facing massive increases in mortgage payments and analysts say at least some of that is because of what you've done in the last five or six weeks. What do you say to them? Well look I understand it is very difficult for families across the country. And they're blaming you. And the, the fact is we are facing both a difficult economic situation internationally where interest rates are rising as well as pressure pressure here in pressure here in Britain but do you accept that you have but made it worse well you derided abacus economics as you called it you belittled tre treasury orthodoxy they're now back aren't they on your watch well we have to of course make sure we have economic stability as a country and it was my responsibility as Prime Minister, to take the tough decision and make sure we delivered that. What do you say to people who say that you are now a Prime Minister in name only, that you've had to junk almost your entire plan, the very thing that you were elected upon, yet you now have a Chancellor who is executing a plan that is a million miles away from your own, and you have acknowledged that what you've had to pause, what you've had to stop, is still what you really believe. You're now leading a government that's executing an agenda that you don't even believe in. Well, I appointed the Chancellor because I knew that we had to pursue these policies. What you've done in the last five weeks since you took office has made it worse for people. It's made it harder for people to pay their bills. Well, first of all, I have said sorry for the fact that you know, we did act too far. We, we went too far and too fast. And that has consequences but, for people on people's bills. But, the, the reason I did that was to make sure that we were dealing with the immediate issue of the energy crisis. <laughs> Mr Speaker, those spending cuts are on the table for one reason and one reason only, because they crashed the economy. <laughs> Mr Speaker, she's asking me questions because we're a government in waiting yeah. and they're an, they're an opposition in waiting. I've got the list here. 45p tax cut, gone. Corporation tax cut, gone. 20p tax cut, gone. Two-year energy freeze, gone. Tax-free shopping, gone. Economic credibility, gone. And her supposed best friend, the former Chancellor, he's gone as well. They're all gone. So why is she still here? I am a fighter and not a quitter. I have acted in the national interest to make sure that we have economic stability. Prime Minister. Order. Order. I'm going to hear the Prime Minister. I suggest that all members need to hear the answer. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I am a fighter and not a quitter. On the energy price guarantee. We have. We've delivered on the energy price guarantee. We've delivered on national insurance. We are going to deliver 
to stop the militant trade unions disrupting our railways. The honourable gentleman has no idea, he has no plan and he has no alternative. James Grundy. I just say it's obviously it's more popular choice. Come on, James Grundy, you've got a future. <laughs> Polling from YouGov shows that Truss's favourability ratings stand at minus 70. That's the worst favourability rating of any party leader since polling began. She's a full 17 points below Boris Johnson's worst score and only 10 points more popular than Prince Andrew. Trust future as PM more uncertain after the disarray. What happened? What happened? <laughs> Everything ever can happen. Braverman's bombshell puts trust on the brink. Braver Look what it says up there. Why trust just can't stay on. Swiftly to fix those mistakes. I've been honest about what those mistakes were. And what we now need to do is move forward and deliver for the country because that's ultimately, that's ultimately what people care about. You're staying put, however bad the poll ratings get, however much noise there is on, amongst your own backbenchers, you're not shifting. I will stay in the job to deliver for the national interest. Hello? Is this thing on? <clears throat> I, Lizzie Lettuce. Just wanted to say thank you to the nation for all your support. We shall remain here for as long as we can. And we can't believe that you have let us into your hearts. There may be trouble ahead, but take a leaf out of our book and know that we will always be able to laugh and joke, even as the clock ticks away against us. Hold this vegetable in your hearts as we go forward and remember there is a bright, green, vibrant future ahead of us. I'm never going to give you up, never going to let you down, never going to run around and desert you, never going to make you cry, never going to say goodbye. Never going to tell a lie and hurt you. Let us prevail. Steve Baker, thank you very much indeed. Thanks a lot, Steve. It wasn't a stupid question, Steve. You know it. I'm very happy to go up against you on trust any day. <laughs> <laughs> what a <laughs> I have never ever seen an individual member physically manhandled into a division lobby. I hope all those people that put Liz Truss in number 10, I hope it was worth it. I hope it was worth it for the ministerial red box. I hope it was worth it to sit around the cabinet table. What on earth is going on in the House of Commons? It is total, absolute, abject chaos. Madam Deputy Speaker, I... I would urge you to launch an investigation into the scenes outside the entrance to the no lobby earlier. As you know, members are expected to be able to vote without fear or favour. Yes. And the behaviour code, which is agreed by the whole of the House, says that there shall never be bullying or harassment yes. of members. I saw, I saw members being physically manhandled into another lobby and being bullied. If we want to stand up against bullying in this house of our staff, we have to stop bullying in this chamber as well, don't we? Order, order. We're talking about behaviour. We will have a little bit of good behaviour for a moment on both 
sides of the House. Do you think there's any coming back from this? I don't think so. I'm sorry, it's very difficult to convey. You look just furious about this. I am. I am. I've had enough. I've had enough of talentless people um, putting their tick in the right box, not because it's in the national interest, but because it's in their own personal interest to achieve ministerial position. And I, and I know I speak for hundreds of backbenchers who right now um, are worrying for their constituents all the time, but now worrying about their own personal circumstances because there is nothing as X as an ex-MP. Do you not actually feel ashamed that I seen a segment on the news last night and a 65-year-old woman was crying because she couldn't use a toaster. That lady over there has just been crying about the cost of living. Are you not ashamed of a party that our older generation are crying in fear of how they're going to survive and live? Are you not ashamed of that? Look, it's not about being ashamed. It's about trying to work out how I can act. I really hate the fact that there are people suffering the way that you've just described. Uh, I didn't see that piece. Um, and we've got to do something about it. We can't just sit there You've been in power for 12 what, what, years. How can you do, How can you say we're trying to do something? You've been well, in because, power for 12 years. Kerry, what we haven't had in those 12 years, you know, in the lead up to those, we haven't had two years when we basically switched off the We've had 12 economy. years of austerity. No, but we have... We how have, can but you we're defend that? Every single country in the world turned off their economy effectively for two years. We spent 408... Can you just change the same drivel over and over again by blaming Ukraine and blaming Russia and blaming Covid? You have been in power for 12 years. 40% of children in the North East live in poverty. Are you not I'm, ashamed look, of that? No, Kerry, what I'm saying to you is that we're trying to act targeting our support towards those people. Now, having just <laughs> hot, hot, nearly half you a trillion... You need to be on a stage as a clown. You have not got a clue. I came into office at a time of great economic and international instability. Families and businesses were worried about how to pay their bills. Putin's illegal war in Ukraine threatens the security of our whole continent. And our country has been held back for too long by low economic growth. I was elected by the Conservative Party with a mandate to change this. We delivered on energy bills and on cutting national insurance. And we set out a vision for a low tax, high growth economy that would take advantage of the freedoms of Brexit. I recognise though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King to notify him that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. Oh I my God. The mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. What? I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King. She's to off to see him. fucking big ears. I'm resigning <laughs> as leader of the Conservative Party. Wait, wait, but Noddy. Noddy. She toots her horn today. May wait for Noddy. Noddy. Hip, 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 hip hooray. May way for Noddy. <laughs>